Hello everybody, welcome back, and today we are going to continue on with our Cold War story, if you will, but this time we're going to go from a different angle, not looking at it from the American point of view, or the Russian point of view, or any of their allies. Rather, we're going to look at the people who don't necessarily want to be aligned with either of those groups, and thus we have the non-aligned movement. Basically what you're seeing here with the non-aligned movement is it's kind of like twofold. Um, Post-World War II, you have a lot of nations that are becoming free and gaining their independence and trying to get themselves established on the world stage and a lot of the groups uh, a lot of the group that's involved with the non-aligned movement will be part of them and also trying to protect them but more importantly they looked at what was going on with the influence that both the west and the east were trying to have and they just don't want to be a part of it and in many cases these are countries with like very high populations that places like india china indonesia that really see that going with the Soviets or the Americans don't necessarily help the particular situation that they're in and that they're trying to develop with their own nations. This all kind of gets started at something called the Ben Dung Conference in, that occurred in April of 1955. Uh, 29 nations were present that actually represented almost half of the world's population. The pictures on the right are some uh, taken from the conference uh, of some of the main leaders there from Indonesia, India, and Guinea, as well as on the bottom kind of like a big assembly hall where a lot of like the, uh, the proclamations, if you will, were coming out. Um, this was mainly sponsored by India, Burma, Pakistan, Ceylon, and Indonesia, although China's going to have a role as well. And Indonesia is where it is hosted uh, in Bandung. So the goals of the conference really were to foster international cooperation amongst these newly developing nations, really trying to spread awareness of anti-colonialism and the problems that colonialism caused, which I've covered in other videos. Feel free to look at those. And the guy that's really at the front of this is Jawaharlal Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, I think I said that right, of the Prime Minister of India, actually India's first Prime Minister. And he really sees India as having a place of leading these developing nations. Um, India itself at that point is only eight years old and giving countries the opportunity to not be dominated by, in the past, as they have been in the past by colonial oppressors. Um, Mao is also going to have a role here. Uh, China kind of wants to play that a little bit, but China doesn't always, they, they kind of always go their own way. Um, they're, of course, not big time allies of the Soviets, but they're also going to have issues with India, and India is kind of as the, the, the front leader here. Not that other nations won't be involved. They absolutely will be involved. Um, it, it's pretty, it's going to cause some stress between them. But the big themes of cooperation and anti-colonialism will be at the forefront of this. And the thing about these conferences and the non-aligned movement, it's not like a formal type thing. It's policies that are going to be advocated and support with one another. So some of the ideas that they're looking forward to is, one, respect to fundamental human rights is really trying to right some of the wrongs of the issues that have been developed during colonialism. Uh, territorial integrity, the idea that a nation's borders are a nation's borders and you need to respect those. And actually, if I jump down to the bottom, what piggybacks on that is abstention from intervention. Yes, there might be something going on in another country that you're not a fan of, but that's the other country and you can't do that. And that's really important because if we look at the things that, say, Russia and the United States are doing, it's the complete opposite of that. That's what they're very big on. Uh, the equality of all races. And this is a big deal. If you look at the dominant races involved in what Europe had done for years, the United States and Russia, this representation of the African and Asian nations in particular who make up the predominant amount of nations in this, that's a really big thing. Um, equality of all states regardless of size. You know, yes, we're not as big as the United States or the Soviet Union, but we are equal, we are sovereign nations, and should be treated that way. And the other big deal is really just trying to prevent the big powers from dominating everybody. Um, but by doing it through through not using force as a threat. So not using like the threat of force to get your way. Rather, focus on peaceful negotiations. And if we do that, we can mutually help each other. 
The picture here on the right is really the five leaders who are kind of in front of all of this and will be in front when the non-alignment is kind of for, the non-alignment movement is kind of formally created in 1961. You have Nehru on the left there from India, then you have a uh, Kwame Nkrumah from Ghana, Gamal Nasser from Egypt, Sukarno from Indonesia, and the Marshal Tito from Yugoslavia. And so those nations are really going to be at the forefront, both at Bandung and as we move forward. And so finally, that kind of advocacy that started in 1955 will eventually result in a big summit meeting to kind of make this more official uh, of an actual movement. And that's going to occur in the Belgrade Conference, which happens in 1961. And again, the influences from the outside world, the influences from areas like India and Indonesia trying to establish um, independence for themselves as well as for other developing nations. Um, and the, the three guys really here that were kind of running this particular show, you have Nehru, Marshal Tito again, and Gamal Nasser from Egypt. And there are two core focuses. One is going to be really the protection of new countries as they are emerging as well as, again, making sure that areas like the Americans and the Soviets aren't finding ways to dominate those nations, whether it be militarily, economically, stuff like that. So they do for this organization, but what's important to understand is that there is no formal constitution, there is no secretariat or like a parliament like the EU has, all members are equal, uh, ideas that will be advanced are... Uh, arrived at through consensus and I think they're up to like their 20 some uh, summit where they will meet regularly to work on these ideas and so these are the nations as you can see here that took part as you can see it's primarily an African and Asian group but we've got Cuba in there uh, Yugoslavia and Cyprus kind of from the Europe area but mostly Africa and Asia Now, what are their core ideas to promote? Uh, here on the right, you see one of the interior. So this is the symbol, as you see the mouse here. And then they always add this on when, uh, who is in charge. So Azerbaijan today actually is uh, the chairman until 2022. Um, number one is world peace and really focus on prevention of mass conflict. Two, the promotion of multiculturalism is that different cultures are important and the exposure to that and the growth of that. Uh, absolutely anti-mass militarization. They're a big part of the anti-nuclear movement, despite the fact that India has nukes, but whatever. Um, they're really big on one of the reasons why we have so much war is this massive buildup of militaries, which allows nations to do it and sometimes might even prompt them to go to war. Some of the immediate actions is uh, avoiding power blocks in order to um, advance specific things. Uh, they really want to work on strengthening the UN, uh, which is really, really crucial. And finally, and the way that you do that by supporting UN actions, trying to get the, involve, the UN involved in mediating conflicts, if there's a conflict that needs force, perhaps using the UN to do it and not, you know, country A or country B, really, you know, trying to use the UN for what it, it was intended on being used for. <coughs> Excuse me. And also, you can't be in NATO or the Warsaw Pact. Now, the Warsaw Pact no longer exists, but that idea that we're not here about military solutions. If you look on the, the right, that's going to be a map that's going to be crucial to what they really promote and still, in a way, promote today. Uh, one, really big on not, you know, the, the official declaration that you will not interfere in the internal affairs of any other nation. Um, working on economic cooperation so that we can build trade policies, we can exchange goods and enhance members' economies. Aiding nations in becoming free, which was a big thing from the 1950s until the 1980s. And just look in the Western Hemisphere, those are the territories that gained independence after World War II. So the nations that aren't uh, purple were ones that already had independence. So as you can see, 
That's a lot. So there's a big job there. Um, helping nations develop economy and gaining access to resources and helping them gain access to their own resources or reasonable trade deals to get outside resources for manufacturing and things like that. Today, it's a little bit hard. With the death of the Cold War, um, uh, in a lot of ways, it's kind of lost its way. In other words, like, you know, what are we doing now? The Cold War's gone. Most of these uh, nations actually have their independence and freedom. But, uh, sorry, a little flip there. But the whole idea today is it really is working on some of these things like the non-interference, helping nations develop economic uh, strength and cooperation amongst one another so as to strengthen them as a whole. And if you look today, so... Uh, the nations that are in the non-aligned movement are in red, so you can see that extends to quite a lot of South America. Observer countries are countries that will do some things for them, with them, not for them, uh, but they're not necessarily involved per se. Um, but you can see really a tremendous amount of nations, almost all of Africa, with really the exception of like the Western Sahara and and. Uh, and South Sudan, who is a pretty new country as it is, but almost everywhere else in the world, including Indonesia, some of the Pacific Islands, um, you know, countries like over here, like Mauritius and, and the seashells and whatnot. So you get a little bit of everybody involved in here. And so that's really where it is. It's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do as they move forward. But in this Cold War period, they were really vital for trying to get nations on their feet and staying out of in some cases, the nonsense of the Cold War. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that one, and forgive my cough for earlier, but uh, we'll see what we got coming up next, and I'll see you soon.